Hey guys, Tristan here back with another video and I want to start off this video by saying that today actually marks six months since I've owned the Canon EOS R6. Um, so I think after six months, I pretty much have a good grasp on the ins and outs of this camera, what I like about this camera, what I dislike about this camera. Um, and despite its flaws today, I'm gonna tell you guys why I still think the Canon EOS R6 is still the perfect camera for me in 2021. So up until about mid last year, a good portion of my professional work and my work on YouTube was filmed on the Canon 6D Mark II that I have since sold, but I really, really did love that camera. The only drawback was that I couldn't shoot in 4K. And so what I would have to do, especially when uploading videos to YouTube, um, I wanted that 4K experience. So I would upsize the footage to 4K in Adobe Premiere and then export it as a 4K file to upload onto YouTube. Um, I did not like doing that, but then came the Canon EOS R um, that I'm shooting this video on right now. Actually, I bought that camera uh, because I wanted the 4K capabilities and it does well in 4K. But the only drawback is the crop is super dramatic. It crops in way too much, even with a wide lens like the 16 millimeter I'm shooting on right now. So I, I ended up doing the same thing. I would shoot. I would just shoot my videos in 1080p, upsize them to 4K and upload them to YouTube. So then came the Canon EOS R6. I was up at five in the morning to watch the announcement on this camera. And the fact that it only has a 1.05 crop when shooting in 4K, I was like, you know what, whatever, I'll take it. Because now I don't have to worry about upsizing it to 4K in post. And honestly, the crop isn't that bad at all. Matter of fact, I did make a video about the 4K crop. You can watch it here, it's, it's in this info card. I never know where these things are at, but if you wanna learn more about the 4K crop on that camera, watch that video. But man, all I really wanted in a camera was the ability to shoot in 4K without the crop, without having to upsize my videos to go on YouTube. So again, um, Canon knocked it out the park with the EOS R6. Again, you can go with the R5 if you want to, but the way you know my budget is set up, this camera was the one for me. So enough about the 4K crop, on, on to the next thing. All right, so up next we have color correcting and I'm gonna be a straight shooter with you guys, gonna be 100% honest, looking you dead in your eye. Color correcting with this camera has been an absolute dream and it's because of the C-Log profile, something that the Canon 6D Mark II did not have. Matter of fact, I would have to shoot in the neutral color profile with the 6D Mark II and it always took me forever to get it exactly the way I wanted my picture to look in post and it was sometimes a struggle. But again, with this one, it takes me about 30 seconds to a minute to get the color that I want out of this camera. No issues at all. And then a lot of that has to do with this camera's ability to shoot in 10-bit color. And actually speaking of 10-bit color, something that I was concerned about uh, when this camera was initially announced was despite its ability to shoot in 10-bit, the only codec that was available for it is the IPB codec, the smaller codec and not the all I. And that's still the case to this day. Now, will it come out in a future firmware update? I have no idea, but I'll be honest again with you guys. Um, when I shoot all I on the EOS R and compare it to the IPB on the R6, I really don't see that huge of a difference. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. Now, is it weird that the R6's predecessor has both codecs and this one doesn't? Yes, but again, is it a big deal? I don't really think so. Everyone's favorite topic, the IBIS on the Canon EOS R6. It flat out stinks, it sucks, I hate it, especially when you're shooting wide. If you're gonna shoot wide with this camera, just make sure you have that IBIS turned off because otherwise your shot will be useless, it'll be completely ruined because we've all seen the wobble in everyone's videos. You're just gonna end up making everyone nauseous and, and we don't want that. And the thing about it, man, is when we vlog, when I vlog, you vlog, when everybody vlogs, we want a wide shot of ourselves, right? And we want a stable shot, so we'll turn the IBIS on, but again, it just creates that terrible wobble. One thing that sucks about it is that when I am vlogging, when I am making videos, is that I, I will turn it on when I get tight B-roll shots. Again, shooting beyond that 35 millimeter focal point, but I'll forget to turn it back off, I'll go back to vlogging, and now I'm in post looking at the footage and it's all that wobble back behind me, so my shot's absolutely ruined and I just have to go with it, so. That's all the time I'm going to spend on the wobble. Again, it's it's terrible. Canon, please do better. Let's go ahead and move on to the next subject. 
So let's talk about the body of this camera. First things first, it does fit really comfortably in the hand. Um, I like how it feels. I feel like I have a good grasp on it. Um, one thing that I will point out is that I feel like the grip on here is slightly shallower than the grip on the ESR, which is um, a little bit deeper. Um, the ESR does feel more comfortable than this, but again, it's, it's not that huge of a difference. Um, something else that I didn't really notice until I watched someone else's video is that the screen is a little bit smaller on the EOS R6 um, than it is on the EOS R. This is something that I really didn't notice though, and I'm used to it, so it's not that big of a deal, especially if you're shooting to an external monitor. Now, something that I am glad that Canon brought back was the joystick and the wheel because I will tell you I hated having to hit a press button to cycle through photos when I could have just easily just spent spent the wheel let's do some ASMR can you guys hear that I love spinning this wheel it makes going through photos and footage uh, a lot more faster and it's a breeze and what else oh yeah the touch bar so <laughs> I'm glad they got rid of that because it was pretty useless. And I remember being excited about it at first because I was like, hmm, what can I assign my touch bar to? Oh, ISO. So I assigned my ISO to it. And in the middle of filming, sometimes I would accidentally hit the touch bar, adjusting my ISO mid clip, therefore ruining my clip and I have to shoot it over again. So good on you, Canon. Thank you for getting rid of the touch bar. Let's let's not do that again. So personally, in my work, I don't find myself in a lot of situations where I would have to rely on a camera to shoot in low light. But the few times I have been in dark situations, this camera actually has performed really, really well. I didn't exactly push the envelope with these clips from our camping trip, and we did have a few light sources like the fire and our headlamps. But even then, I pushed the ISO to about 6400 in those shots, and it didn't look bad at all. I didn't really see that much grain. Um, the shot looked clean. Um, there are YouTubers and filmmakers out there who will push the ISO to the limits to something like 256,000 ISO, but in real world situations, no one's really gonna do that. So again, I do think this camera will handle great in low light if you shoot in a lot of low light conditions. Again, I don't, but you know. Ladies and gentlemen, the most controversial, most talked about hot topic that everyone complained about when these cameras first came out is the overheating issue. As soon as we got to the point to where we found the car, look what happened. The Canon EOS R6 overheated. Um, this camera overheated on me a grand total of three times, but it was all within the first couple of weeks of me owning this camera. And the frustrating part about that is it's not like I was shooting these super long interviews. I was shooting short video clips here and there to piece together a story. And I guess what my mistake was, was setting the camera down in between shots and not turning it off. Something that I've always done with every camera I've ever owned. But with this one, when I would do that, it would cause it to overheat. And the consequence from that was that you had to wait for the camera to cool off, which wasted time. It took time. So I'm just standing around like just waiting on my camera to cool off. But this is something that Canon fixed right away, it seems, with the first firmware update. Ever since that firmware update, I haven't had any, any overheating issues with this camera. So shout out to Canon for fixing that issue because this camera, man, after those first time, couple of times using it, I thought the camera was going to be useless. So again, thank you, Canon, for causing my camera not to overheat anymore. Did I say that right? Thank you, Canon, for allowing. You know, what? let's just let's just close out the video. <laughs> so that does it for this video, guys. I hope it helps, especially if you're on the verge of purchasing this camera. You've just been putting it off for the last six months or so. Um, again, I've had it for six months and I've realized that it is the perfect camera for me. It does what I need it to do and I don't see myself outgrowing it for the next couple of years. Um, if you're coming from the EOS R, I say it's a much needed upgrade. Um, you won't regret it. So thank you for watching guys. If you like this video, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification. So every time I do upload a video, you get notified, you know, all the YouTuber stuff. My name is Tristan Irvin. I upload videos weekly, vlogs, Super 73 videos, camera videos, because I love all this stuff. Follow me on social media, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.